Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. We're going to be doing a bit more robot building today on the InMove. Um, as you can see here, I've got the right forearm. Super pleased with how this has turned out. So what I'm going to be doing in this video is showing you how I put this thing together. Okay, so let's take a look at the right forearm. Um, I've got most of the parts here ready for the, the shell of the forearm. We will obviously have the servo bed to go inside as well. Um, I've done a little bit of work on some of these parts, but before I start, I want to just show you a few things that I've bought um, to help me with this part of the build. Um, I did say that I wasn't going to be painting the parts, and you can see that already I have attempted painting one of them. I just couldn't resist it. Um, I wasn't really happy with how they looked uh, freshly printed so I have sanded this part um, filled it a bit and s started to prime it um, it does need a little bit more work and I think I am gonna go ahead and, and paint all of these parts here as I said I have purchased a few things uh, to help me along the way um, I've switched to a different filler so instead of using the Artex filler I've now switched to this um, wood filler I thought I'd try something different. Um, the Artex filler seemed a bit too soft, but to be honest, I've tried this wood filler and it isn't much different. It's very similar to the Artex filler. Um, but I will reserve judgment on it until um, we get a bit further along. And I'll let you know how that goes. Um, the other thing I purchased was some new wet and dry sandpaper at various different um, grit levels. I'm not sure, quite sure what range I've got here, but I have got um, a good range of um, different grit levels. And I'll hopefully explain what I use as I go along. So there's a couple of things I've bought, sandpaper and filler. And then one other thing I've purchased is these little clamps. I didn't have these for the um, left arm when we were building the left arm. And they should come in handy for clamping these parts together as we glue them. Okay, so let's start having a look at some of the parts. Um, I have used the new filler on this part here. Um, it is looking quite smooth. The camera doesn't show all the imperfections, but it is looking um, particularly smooth. There are some little imperfections in there. Um, I, I coated it with this stuff um, all over. Uh, let it dry overnight so it is you know had a good chance to dry and then I've sanded it and I haven't sanded all of it off so we actually can't see any of the um, 3d printed lines but we it is slightly rough in some places um, I'm finding as I'm sanding it it's not really improving that so again I'm not sure if this filler is too soft you sand it and it just sort of pulls chunks out um, I'm not sure what to do with that, whether to fill it and sand again, or whether to prime it and see what we have after that. I think I probably will try filling it a little bit more and re-sanding. I think it's tempting to, to move straight onto the priming stage, but it, that's a mistake, I believe. Um, you need to get it smooth before you start painting. So that one's done. The, the others haven't had any uh, prep at all. This is how they come straight off the printer. It's not bad. It's a pretty good finish, but um, it's a bit grainy, and that's what I'm trying to get rid of. So we'll need to sand these um, and fill them. Um, there's three more of these to do. Uh, this other big one here, and this one. Um, we'll need to just clean up the edges a bit. There's a little bit of the um, brim left on those. that will need just cleaning off. Um, once we've got them probably all up to this stage, um, so they're all pretty smooth, we'll then start gluing them together. That's when my clamps will come in handy and I will just be using normal super glue. So all I used on the first part was this uh, P240 grit um, sandpaper. Um, and I think uh, I'll just continue with that on the, on the next three parts.
just going to clean up the edges uh, with a knife. Now one problem we had with the uh, left arm was the, the piece that fits inside here um, was a bit tight so I think it's important to just give a quick file inside this part here. Could do this wet. Um, this paper, this sandpaper, is uh, wet and dry paper. Um, and wetting it will actually keep the plastic cool, stop the plastic from melting. Just a little messier. So I'll move on to filling this next part. I tried to um, push the filler right into the, the grooves that the 3D printing method has left. I want to try and completely cover the whole part with just a very thin layer.
There, so they're done. Um, we'll need to let them dry for several hours now, let that go hard. So same as last time, um, we glue the two halves together. I've clamped them, as you can see, with the new clamps that I've got. And I ran a little bit of extra glue around the inside of here. So I'll leave them for a few hours to uh, set hard and then we'll sort of fill across this gap and try and sand that so we lose that line. So I've removed the clamps and I've put some filler across here. So we'll be able to sand that later to try and get rid of the lines. Um, what I'm going to do next is glue this piece on. So that would be the wrong way of doing it. You, you see you kind of got this curve going in and then back out again. That's not correct. Um, it goes the other way around. It goes, goes this way around so you've got a nice gentle line on each side of the arm. So I've put some filler around uh, this end piece. Um, it's the end piece that glues onto the forearm. And I filled it and then sanded it back and you can see around here it's pitted and here so I think what I need to do here is put a second coat of filler in and then sand it back again. So here's the forearm cover with the first coat of primer put on. Um, I put a couple of bits of tape on the inside of this sort of bracket here because I didn't want um, too much thick paint building up inside there. So I know when we um, did the other arm, uh, this is a little narrow in here, so I didn't want it to be uh, reduced in width anymore by several layers of paint. Um, this is still a little rough. It did drip a little here, but we can, uh, there's hardly anything we can sand that out. Um, I'll sand this down again and give it another coat. I'm quite surprised I can actually still see some of the um, printing layers through that but the paint's not on that thick. So sand this down and get another coat on it. I had a minor setback with this part. Um, I actually dropped it and uh, this end piece smashed off. Uh, nothing was really broken it just uh, detach this part from the end so I had to uh, re-glue it and um, I filled it again I'm gonna have to resand it and sort of rework that area should be fine though it's just set me back a little bit so it's starting to look good now um, this is the third coat of primer um, after the second coat of primer I sanded it very lightly with P400 grit sandpaper and I'm now going to give this third coat a uh, very light rubbing down with the P1500 grit, which is uh, quite smooth sandpaper. Um, I'll give that a sand down and then we'll get hopefully one last coat of primer on it before we switch to the top coat. Here you can see I've put the first coat of white on the uh, forearm cover. Um, it's going to need another coat because it is, it's not quite covered here. Um, would want to do two coats anyway um, and the other side of the forearm has had the final coat of primer so just needs a, a light sanding and then we can put the color on that as well so let's move on and take a little look at the servo bed now I've got all the parts here ready off the printer um, they've still got their brims attached so we'll need to clean those up uh, we've got the main servo bed here um, we've got this front cable guide, this will go in uh, at the front here, and then we've got the rear cable guide which will go on the top there, not sure which way around, we'll figure that out in a minute, um, just one screw in the top here. Uh, then we have the um, spring tensioner, we're not actually fitting the springs but I'm going to just um, put this part in just so I I know where it is, I don't lose it later. We will put springs in at some point. Just don't have any springs at the moment. So what I'm gonna do is just clean off all these brims um, and uh, start putting these parts together. Just a 
two and a half millimeter drill bit. Just gonna run that through that hole there. So I'll just straighten everything up before I tighten it. Some, some of the holes are already quite clean. Um, this part has come out surprisingly well on the printer. There's one you can see down there has got a little bit of plastic in, so I'm just running this through to just make sure the holes are clear. Again, I don't need to go mad with a power drill. Um, got this rear cable guide here. Again, that looks super clean. These parts have come out really well. These parts definitely look more refined than the uh, original ones. need a new set of files. You can just feel that they're not very effective anymore. Just a little fiddly around the edges of the ends, I should say. So we just have uh, one screw on here. The thing with this part is you can get it the wrong way around. Um, it could go that way or we could turn it and put it that way. And that is the correct way. Um, you kind of have to look down the holes and see that they, they should be angled inwards, point towards the servos. So we'll come the, So the fishing lines will come through these holes here and then go off in this direction towards the center of the part and that way. So that's fine. Um, looks like we probably want to fit the servo before we fit this because we've got these holes under here where the servos fit in. Um, so we probably want to put this on after we've installed the servo. So I won't put the screw in for now. It already seems to be two and a half millimeters, so we don't really need to draw it out. Um, yeah, this this has gone together surprisingly well. So I think it is best just to uh, try the parts for fit before you start screwing things together. Um, one other significant notable difference between this part and the um, the last arm we built is you've got these extra parts here now. Um, and I believe they are for an extra servo to attach in there. Um, I'm not sure, so I could be telling you incorrectly here, but I believe that is for a double actuated thumb. Um, there's two holes down in there and then one hole back here. So I think you fit the servo in with just three screws. That does look a, a little awkward to get the servo in there. Um, we're not going to be fitting that. Um, I haven't actually seen the design for the double actuated thumb. 
so I'm not going to be building that but it looks like you could fit an extra servo down in here yeah so we won't be fitting that and it's kind of annoying really because um, that's where we uh, attached our circuit board before um, and it's going to get in the way and as we're not using it it's a shame that it's there um, but it would be pretty handy as an upgrade if we want to upgrade the thumb at some time in the future so I'm not totally against having it there it's just uh, a little annoying in my particular scenario where I don't need it um, but it's a, it's a nice idea um, I believe we need to just file these parts out a little bit here. These, this doesn't quite fit in here, um, and I think there's another locating lug uh, just there, and they're not quite fitting in. So, just a little bit of filing to um, get those two sit right because we we need this bed sitting flat in there. Okay, so that is sitting in there flat now. You might just want to file out um, this part here. I didn't, but it's uh, quite tight there, um, and. This part here, um, this one here didn't seem to be so much of a problem. There's a lot more clearance on that, but um, this one here and this one here, a little tight. Um, so that's sitting in there flat now. Um, it's a little tricky to decide what order to put things in, but I think what I'm going to do is um, take the bed out and install four of the servos. Um, that'll leave us access to this screw here, and if we don't fit uh, the servo that goes in here we can still access uh, this fixing hole here right so these are the servos that I've bought um, got these off eBay they are the MG 996R Tower Pro um, we used these before the MG 669R in the other arm I believe I believe it's the same servo but they weren't marked as tower pro so I'm not entirely convinced about the origin of these um, I got them off eBay but you, you never know where they really originate from um, they feel they feel very light and the the cables seem uh, very thin um, they cost 12 pounds for five so they really are low cost so um, they might not be particularly high quality they should do fine for the fingers um, I haven't had any problems with the first set but the, these do look a little different um, you, they come with this servo horns uh, we use the round one so we can discard most of this stuff um, we do need the little black screw that's important not to lose that because that is the screw that um, we, we screw the servo horn onto the top of the servo with. And they're like that. So I'll just start um, putting things together. So I can understand this design a little bit more now. Um, I noticed this on the first arm, but I didn't really understand what was going on. Um, this servo is mounted a little bit lower than this one. And it's kind of messing with my mind to... Uh, figure out how that works you know how, how how can this one be lower than that one both servos are the same size so why is this one's mounting lower and um, what it is is that this servo is actually sunk into the bottom of the part and actually comes out of the bottom slightly whereas the one on the other side doesn't and I'm guessing uh, Giles designed it that way to give a little bit more clearance on this side of the arm maybe as the arm curves over this one was just sort of catching slightly so he's he's lowered it down just to improve that that works quite well um, one thing I'm a little baffled with um, with though is the this one um, has quite a lot of uh, gap between the the white plastic part and the the black plastic of the servo so it looks like you've got enough room to actually install the anti-vibration mounts um, you have a you have a rubber bush that that fits in the end and then a metal sleeve that goes down the center and the idea of that is um, 
the vibrations coming from the servo rotating don't travel through to the actual the rest of the parts because the um, the rubber absorbs the uh, vibrations so that's the idea of those that's why you get those with the servos but the problem is they, they do fit on that one this one um, they don't really because it touches the the white plastic um, and the problem is these holes the fixing holes for the servos are too large so you can install that and then when you put the screw down the, the screw which comes with the servo that fits in there you can see there um, just falls straight into the hole you know it's just the holes just the fixing holes are just too big so I'm not quite sure why why Giles designed them with um, such big holes I can only assume that he doesn't use these little screws he uses bigger screws um, I have bigger screws here uh, which yeah, they're still too small. Um, I'm going to have to use quite large screws, and that means that um, they'll be too big to fit down the metal sleeves. So we're going to have to discard the vibra anti vibration dampeners. So on these two, the uh, cables just come out through these parts here in the sides. Let's see another one on this side here. The two rear ones, what I'd already done, come straight out the back, and then uh, I believe the final server that goes uh, points the other way goes forward the cable comes out through that hole there we've got four of them in there now and I fitted the two fixing screws down to screw the bed down I did actually take these two out again and screw the bed down because with these servos in it was difficult for me to tell whether the bed was in was completely flat on the bottom um, so I popped these two servos out made sure the bed was 100% flat but these two screws in here this one and the one down in there and then you can just about squeeze these servos back in it just flex a little bit to get them back in um I probably made a little bit of a mistake because you don't want to tighten these up don't tighten these uh servos down um, until you've got the last one in so if you leave them loose um, you still have a little bit of flexing in here which allows you to get that last servo in so i'll probably just slacken the screws off on these two and then get that last servo installed if you do uh, remove the screws from the front of here, you can just about squeeze it in there and push that down and get it in. But now I've hit another problem because I believe it's hitting on the screw at the bottom, the screw that's underneath it. Um, so I think you need to use countersunk screws um, for the fixing the bed down. Um, this one's fine because we've got space, but this one down here is going to need a countersunk screw in there. So I'm going to have to try and take that out again. So that's important, um, countersunk screw in this position here. It should give us clearance to get the servo in. Okay, so they're all in now. Um, I haven't screwed them in super tight, I've just, just done just tight enough to hold things still. Um, these three here and, and this one at the back, they, they don't sit down on the uh, servo bed at the fixing points so as you screw them in things kind of bend it's a little annoying um, this is the only one that actually sits down flat and fits properly um, I have made a mistake here this is a little annoying and uh, I'm probably gonna seriously regret this but I've forgotten to install the M3 um, nuts we should have put one in in here um, one in here and um, one underneath this part here that's uh, down in there and there's a fourth one that actually has to go in here and this is going to be the problem one that's going to be really difficult to get in now so I may have to remove this servo to get that nut in there um, I better sort that out because we're going to need those later I figured it would be a lot easier to do these nuts in here um, if I took the servo bed back out again just because it's a lot more access. Um, I did have to apply a bit of heat to these two here. Uh, this one is a little distorted now but we should be able to sort that out. Um, but these two here were actually very loose um, so I've, I've put them all in and I've uh, put a little bit of super glue on each nut. Um, 
I'm kind of hoping that I, I haven't super glued the bolts in but even if I have they, sh they should come out quite easily I'm finding this glue isn't that effective actually um, so I'll just let them dry for a little bit and then we'll uh, take those bolts back out and get the servo bed back in So I've put the uh, servo bed back in and I've installed the first uh, servo horn. Um, I just went through that to figure out how to do it and then I'll, I'll do the next one now and I'll show you what I did. So the first thing I did was to um, just run an 8.5mm drill through this hole here um, just by hand. It barely takes anything off but it's just uh, enough to make the black servo horn fit. I then just pushed the servo horn in, is another one, um, with the, the row of three holes lining up um, with the notch. And then we use the uh, center hole on the two sides to put the screws in. And I'm just using the screws that came with the servo, these tiny little screws. Um, I drilled through with a one and a half millimeter drill just through these uh, the one in the middle on each side I'm just using my hand to drill through these I'm not using the power drill these are quite delicate what I'm doing is I'm going to screw them all the way in and then I'm just going to back them off a little bit by screwing them all the way in um, once and then uh, undoing it and it means that when we do it the second time it'll just be that little bit easier And then what I'm doing is I'm just cutting off the um, extra bit that's coming through the back. The screws are quite soft so you can cut them quite easily. Um, I have used a Dremel before to cut screws off but that tends to make the screw really hot and then it melts the plastic. It's not a good idea to cut screws with a Dremel when you've got them stuck through a piece of plastic. Um, and then I'm just filing off the sharp edges. Just takes it down a little bit. Okay. Okay, so what I'm gonna do next is um, on these three holes here that line up with the notch, um, the two outside holes, this one and this one, just going to run through them with a 2mm drill. Um, we have to run the fishing line through those holes, so just want a bit of clearance on them. Okay. And then finally, I'm using a one and a half millimeter drill. I would use a one millimeter if I had it, but this is the smallest drill I've got. I'm going to drill down these holes here. You have to be really careful because you don't want to crack the plastic at this point. I cracked quite a few when I'd done the first arm. So we just want to go really slowly.
And again, I'm just doing it by hand rather than a, using a power tool. See, we just opened that hole up. Same on the other side, just really gently. And then we can just pop that onto the uh, Servo. I'll, I'm not worried too much about these today because I'll probably um, remove them again when we actually set the arm up. <clears throat> and then we hold them on with the uh, little black screw. I'm only fitting them really so that uh, we don't lose them for later. I probably will remove them when we um, run the fishing line through. So I'll do the other three off camera and then we'll come back. Okay, the next thing to do is to fit this uh, rear cable guide. And as I said before, we want the holes to run inwards towards the, the servos. So then the very last thing we're going to do today is um, fit the cover over the top. It's everything in there so we just want to pop that on. Uh, one issue we have with this is you can see that there's a, a section cut out in here um, and I think you have to just cut this piece off the same yourself. Um, yeah so we just need to chop a little bit of that out. I use the Dremel for that. Um, I think if we don't it I think it hits this servo here So we had the same problem with the last arm, so I'll, I'll just cut a little piece away from that should be able to fit this on. It does seem a little tight down uh, this end here. Um, so then the last thing is to put some M3 screws in here.
So I actually run out of white paint when I was doing this, uh, otherwise this bit here would have been painted white as well. We'll come back to the painting sometime in the future. And there it is, there's the uh, forearm complete. We will have to open it up again um, when we come to attach the hand so that we can run the um, cables through and we'll have to do the uh, electrics as well. But we'll leave that there for today. Um, quite pleased with how that's turned out. This is probably the most disappointing bit. It didn't quite fit very well here. Um, and I wasn't quite happy with the, the finish of the paint in the end. Um, I did accidentally mark it a little bit here and this side uh, hasn't had quite enough white paint on it. Um, so it's not quite as, as white as this side. But I'm going to come back to the painting at some point in the future anyway. Um, there's no point spending too much time on these parts because for all I know I could break this at some point and we'll have to replace it anyway. Um, but there you go so uh, if you liked the video um, please uh, like and subscribe to the channel um, if you've got any comments on what we could have done differently or any improvements then I'd be really pleased to see you leaving comments below other than that thanks for watching and I'll see you next time